All right. We are back. You're listening to America's Voice Now. This is our final segment for today, the 16th of October. Um, I promised you in this in this period we would be talking about the TPP, or what's known as the Trans-Pacific Partnership. And I got to tell you, I've, I've done shows on this before, but as we get closer and closer and closer to a period where we're going to see this thing affect us in the most dire and in significant ways. I think it's important that America understand exactly how dangerous this treaty is for us. The Trans-Pacific Partnership is a treaty which is currently being negotiated and has been under negotiation for over five years. And yet it has been negotiated in complete, utter, total Secrecy. Congress has never seen it. It's a free trade agreement being proposed between the United States, Australia, Brunei, Chile, Canada, Japan, Malaysia, Mexico, New Zealand, Peru, Singapore, and Vietnam. And the problem, ladies and gentlemen, is that this is not a trade agreement. It is a, an agreement that will provide new guidelines and national sovereignty stripping requirements on everything from food safety, fracking, financial markets and how they work, medical services, pricing, drug pricing, pharmacological, copyright, trademark, and internet freedom, among other things. Now, this thing has been roundly trounced by politicians and, I mean, the, the list of advocacy groups that are out there, you know, Tossing this thing under the bus is staggering. But yet America is kept in the total darkness about what this project really is. Congress is kept in the dark. The agenda in this thing is so dangerous, so expansive, that we and Congress have a right to know. And yet Congress has been given no oversight. They haven't been entitled to even see the document or read any of these new regulations and guidelines that will come out as a result of it. These are things which America will be committing to, and Congress has never seen it. The New York Times typically a sycophant for this administration, came out and wrote an opinion piece on this where they, they, they threw this thing under the bus. They called the deal the, quote, the most significant international commercial agreement since the creation of the World Trade Organization in 1995. The White House has issued a press release and a joint statement on their website where they and other proposed signatories to this agreement, the TPP, Trans-Pacific Partnership, confirmed that, quote, our countries are on track to complete the Trans-Pacific Partnership negotiations. Ministers and negotiators have made significant progress in recent months on all of the legal texts and annexes on access to our respective goods, services, investment, financial services, government procurement, and temporary entry markets. That was in the White House's release. However, there were no details of any of the partnerships, no details of what they're terming or defining as access annexing. Annexing access to respective goods, what the heck does that mean? 
legal texts, I would like to see those. And I'd like to see virtually every phrase, every terminology, every name given to everything defined. It covers investment, financial services, government procurement, and temporary entry markets. What does that mean? We're willing to sustain a deficit until Vietnam or Chile or Peru or Singapore get a foothold in our market? Is that what that means? In February, there's a group out there called Open the Government. It's an organization that sent a letter to Obama that blasted the, this thing for not for lack of transparency, right? And they and they admitted in their letter that this thing has been conducted in unprecedented secrecy. Their words, not mine. The letter went on to say, despite the fact the deal may significantly affect the way we live our lives by limiting our public protections, there has been no public access to even the most fundamental draft agreement text and other documents. Now, this, this, this letter was signed not only by OpenTheGovernment.org, but the Project on Government Oversight, Article 19, and the Global Campaign for Freedom of Expression and Information. And that's just a tip of the iceberg. Dozens of other watchdog groups have signed on to alert America what's going on. But nowhere in the press do you hear about this. Nowhere in any of the media... Nowhere is the Ministry of Propaganda exposing America to the truth or even the factual existence of this. These groups have warned that what is being secretly negotiated includes a couple of things. Listen to this. Patent and copyright. Land use. Food and product standards. Natural resources professional licensing, government procurement, financial practices, health care, energy, telecommunications, and service sector regulations. Ladies and gentlemen, this thing is so all-encompassing in its scope that it will require a fundamental change, quote-unquote, in the way America operates. Now, traditionally, these free trade agreements, when they're put together, have to be authorized and and approved or ratified, if you will, by a majority of the House and the Senate. And it usually takes, you know, a long time. They 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 hammer these things back and forth for a year. If you look at previous, the NAFTA, the CAFTA and, the you know, all of these other trade agreements they've done, it takes long periods of of, you know, beating a dead dog with a or dead horse with a dead dog kind of negotiations, right? Here's the problem. The White House in this case is seeking what's called trade promotion authority, quote unquote. And it would fast track the approval of this by requiring Congress to vote on this trade agreement within 90 days of its submission and without any amendment to it at all. And on top of that, this trade promotion authority would grant Obama the right to sign this document before Congress has even had a chance to vote or look at it. That's inexcusable and unacceptable. President Barack Obama is not a monarch. He cannot enjoin the country into a treaty that Congress has not even seen and that they have no hope of even making a change or an amendment to that has to be rushed through. They have to vote on this right now. Ron Wyden, he's a Democrat. He's the guy who's been kind of trying to blow the whistle on this NSA thing, although covering his own self in the process. He proposed legislation that requires the White House to disclose all of these TPP documents to the members of Congress. Here's what he said. The majority of Congress is being kept in the dark 
as to the substance of the TPP negotiations, while representatives of U.S. corporations like Halliburton, Chevron, Pharma, Comcast, and the Motion Picture Association of America are being consulted and made privy to details of the agreement, and they're being asked to look at it as advisors. Wow. So Congress can't know what's going on, but Halliburton, Chevron, and the MPAA and Comcast, they've got open access to it. Con- uh, by the way, Congress has, has submitted written requests to Obama to obtain this document, and they have been refused. Not ignored, refused. Big difference, folks. He's not this he's not stating he didn't get it. He's just saying no, you can't see it. I didn't know that this turned into some kind of a totalitarian uh dystopian monarchy. This thing regulates food, the internet, medicine, all kinds of commerce, domestic and foreign and international in its scope. <clears throat> five of the 29 chapters in this. Now, this is a this is a story that was written by a, a girl by the name of Lori Wallach and Ben Beachy of the Public Citizens Global Trade Watch. They put an article in the New York Times as an op-ed last June. This is a year ago now. Here's what they said. Only five of its 29 chapters cover traditional trade matters like tariffs and quotas. The others impose parameters on non-trade policy, existing and future American laws must be altered to conform with these terms, or trade sanctions can be imposed against American imports. That's a complete and total violation of our national sovereignty. And Barack Obama has no right to do that to the United States of America. They went on to say, pharmaceutical companies, which are among those enjoying access to negotiators as, quote, advisors, have lobbied against government efforts to keep the cost of medicine down. And under these agreements, those companies could challenge such measures by claiming that they undermine their new rights granted by the deal. So in other words, the pharma, the pharma industry wants the ability to have exclusive rights granted to them for a new product that goes above and beyond patent and copyright and trademark protection. Hey, that stuff goes all the way back to the Constitution, folks. Amnesty International has come out and warned about this thing as well. And again, on the patent issue for pharmaceuticals, what they said is risk This agreement risks stifling the development and production of genetic medicine by strengthening and deepening monopoly protection. It also promotes and pushes and incentivizes domestic manufacturing to be removed from the United States and moved offshore. Jim Hightower is a guy who's a who's an activist, and he's wrote an article about this, and I'm going to post it. It's in the comments section of this YouTube video, so find it and read it. He's got a couple of comments out here, and he writes that the deal will transform Internet service providers into private Big Brother police force, empowered to monitor our user activity arbitrarily take our content down and cut off our access to the Internet. He says that this is a replication of SOPA and PIPA and all those other Internet agreements. Internet freedom advocacy groups have been protesting this this TPP, and they're taking specific issue with proposals that have been kind of leaked about this that would enact strict intellectual property rights restraints that would that would change US copyright law the electronic frontier foundation another watchdog organization out there who's excellent by the way they argued that the tpp quote 
restrict the ability of Congress to engage in domestic law reform to meet the evolving intellectual property needs of American citizens and the innovative technology sector. Thirty Internet freedom organizations have signed a global petition warning that the TPP will, quote, rewrite global rules on intellectual property enforcement. America, your president is trying to sign this, bar Congress from having any review of it, and then giving them the bums rush to pass it within 90 days without a single change or amendment. You know what that is? That is treason. That's what it is. This is the fundamental change Obama spoke of. This is the intention. This is the goal. To destroy America from the inside. And if Congress ever signs this agreement and the second and the, and the the second amendment limiting uh small arms treaty and there's another one coming down the path also that's called the TTIP again it's all about intellectual property again it's being negotiated in secret i did whole shows on it go on to youtube and just search search um, uh you know AVN TTIP and TPP TTIP These are trade partnerships on intellectual property, commerce, manufacturing. He's draining the United States of resources and funneling those off to foreign nations. Australia, Brunei, Chile, Canada, Japan, Malaysia, Mexico, New Zealand, Peru, Singapore, and Vietnam. People, when are you going to get the message that President Barack Obama is the most dangerous and exigent threat that the United States has ever known. And that is the truth. You've been listening to America's Voice Now. My name is Michael Evans. Find us on the web at americasvoicenow.org. Find us on our on our Facebook page. We post up stories and all kinds of interesting things. We want you to have input. We want you to comment. We want you to have an opportunity to read tons of stories that I do research every day on to find the right stuff to feed you because the truth is the Ministry of Propaganda is misleading you. So I find those stories that no one else wants to tell you about. And I gather them and I post them up on our Facebook page. Get to it by going to facebook.com forward slash America's Voice Now. You can find them on our regular website, too, under our news links at americasvoicenow.org. You can also find this and every other show posted up on our website at americasvoicenow.org and on our Facebook channel, or YouTube channel, excuse me, at youtube.com forward slash America's Voice Now. Have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow morning. America, take action.